The Kids Aren't Okay by Marigu on Quotev. Chapter 3. Ruby. Ruby Jones sat in the back of the police car as the officer drove him to the station. He got into another fight again, and this time the officer who had arrested him was none other than his dad. Officer Daniel had a scruffy, unshaven beard and curly brown hair. He didn't have time to take care of himself. He was too busy trying to make sure his son wasn't getting beaten to a pulp and his daughter wasn't dying. I can't believe you, Rudy, his dad said, his voice dripping with disappointment. If I'd known you left early to go pick fights, I wouldn't have believed you when you said, I didn't. You know that, Ruby snapped. He left early because the clouded sky and the empty streets were calming, and it helped him clear his head. Well, almost empty. The clutch that bumped into him earlier, the girl with the ponytail and ballerina get-up, she made him sick. Probably one of those rich girls who attended the ballet school further into the city with a family, who had so much money they spent it all doing stupid crap like jumping on a stage and calling it dance. She was lucky he was too deep in thought to think too much about it. I sent you to that reform camp for a reason. Did you not learn anything? His dad asked. No, dad, I didn't. Ruby said, because they didn't teach us anything. It's godforsaken waste of money. Don't say that, his dad, Daniel, said. Ruby rolled his eyes and leaned back into his seat, his gut still throbbed from being socked by that other kid, but he taught him a lesson. Ruby rubbed his bruised and slightly bloody knuckles. No one messes with Ruby Jones, not even some self-righteous street kid who thinks he's better than him. It wasn't even his fault the kid picked a fight, so Ruby gave him a fight. I didn't start it anyway. Jackson could tell you that, Ruby protested. Daniel sighed. <sighs> Ruby knew how his dad didn't think Jackson was a good influence on him, but he was one of the coolest people Rudy knew. Plus, his name wasn't something so wimpy. His dad told him that his mother named him Ruby, since it was her birthstone. She pulled the same stupid stunt on his sister, too. Ruby thought it was selfish and dumb. They're not going to let you off the hook this time, son, Daniel said, still carrying down the street. You could be sent to detention. So, they'll just let me out again, Ruby remarked. Daniel sighed. He did that a lot, sighing when he knew Ruby was right. It made him a little angry, the way his father didn't even try to argue with him. I'm going to drop you off at the station and you go visit your sister, Daniel said, pulling into the parking lot of the police station. Don't make more a mess, please. Fine, Ruby said. He knew better than to argue with his dad when he brought up his sister. She was still in the hospital, and Daniel was going to be there for a few hours. His dad opened the door to his seat, and Ruby got out and followed him to the station. Everyone in the station knew him. He visited the place often. The receptionist checked him and his father in. She glared at him, and Ruby glared back. That stupid witch. Most people in the waiting room noticed him, too. First, they would be naturally curious about who that cop dragged into the station today. Then, they'd notice his busted lip and assume that he's a natural troublemaker. If they dared to make eye contact, they would notice his oddly colored eyes. It was like a teal green. It looked blue in the sun and green in the dark. Hey, Dan, his dad's friend, Detective Carter, said. He wore a long, classic tan trench coat and had a faded haircut. His dark skin complemented his white shirt and black tie underneath the coat. He had a deep voice that was quiet, but could be heard nonetheless. He had his desk, which was neat, and had a slick, black, landline telephone on his desk. The well-known detective caught note of Ruby. Good afternoon, Ruby, he added. Ruby scowled at him and went into his dad's office. He sat in his office chair and spun around. I'll be back soon, buddy, his father said. Ruby didn't stop spinning. His dad sighed and left the room, <sighs> leaving him alone in the office. His dad's desk was messy. It had papers of reports, complaints, and arrests all stacked up on the desk. His nameplate, Officer Jones, gleamed like gold, and pens of various colors and sharpies decorated the surface as well. Ruby had been here many times before. His dad filled out paperwork for the fight pay for the damage, and then he'll go home. Ruby noticed the photo of their family on his desk. They were young at the time, and everyone was smiling. His mother wasn't in the photo, however. She'd left before it was taken. The door opened, and Detective Carter entered the office. Hey, kid, the detective said. I'm gonna have to put you in the cells. What? Why? 
Ruby said, standing up briskly. He hated that place. It was filled with shady kids who caught selling drugs and meth addicts who attacked those shady kids. Everyone who's arrested to be in jail cells out back. Your father knew that. He was just a little scatterbrained to remember. Carter explained. Ah, uh, Ruby groaned. He didn't feel like arguing since his dad taught him not to make more of a mess. Ruby went past the people in the waiting room into the back where the cells were heading kept. Why is it empty? Ruby asked. There wasn't a single person in the cells. Usually there was at least someone. I don't know, Carter said, taking out his keys. We released a few of the families paid bail, so it's open right now. You're lucky, kid. Carter opened the door for Ruby, and he reluctantly entered the cell and sat on the bench. Your dad is going through a lot right now, kid, Carter said, looking up the door. Try and take it easy on him, okay? That's none of your business, Ruby scowled. Carter didn't respond. He left Ruby all alone in the cells, leaving him to his anger and thoughts. Eventually, his thoughts drifted to his sister, Opal. Why was his dad visiting her today? Did she have another attack? The doctor said her treatment had been helping her get better, so why was Ruby so nervous? He buried his head into his head. Excuse me, a man said. Ruby looked up. He wore an all-black suit and sunglasses like a cliché spy movie. Are you Ruby Jones? Who's asking? Ruby asked, glaring at him. The man reached into his coat and pulled out a gun. Ruby's eyes went wide. Whoa, buddy, Ruby said. The man pulled a trigger and a dart shot out and pierced his chest. The dart had a fuzzy end that was red. He looked up and the man in black just stood there looming over him. What the fuck, man? Ruby slurred. He tried to move, but his limbs wouldn't move. He closed his eyes and he didn't feel like a body hit the floor. End of chapter three.